Hello YouTube, B3 here, back another kicking graphic novel review. Got Maddie Matt here doing his What's thing. Up? And we got more Rebirth Gucci for you today. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think we've already we've done a few Rebirth things already. Yeah. Some Superman stuff, a little Green Arrow, which little... we have more coming to that. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to hit Hellblazer, Aquaman. Like, between the two of us, we're getting almost every single Rebirth book. You know that, right? Oh, yeah. No, it's I'm super <laughs> proud of us that our I'm glad that our interests diverge just enough yeah. to cover a wide sp stretch of ground here. The only one I haven't read that's already in graphic novel form is Harley Quinn, and that's it. And that's just because I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I only got Suicide Squad because it was free, but uh, so uh, well that's a conversation for a different time. There was a good sale. Gotcha. But yeah, that's also how I can afford this DC Universe Rebirth the Deluxe Edition because I have that first printing of this issue. Is worth some cash. Oh my God, is this important, guys? It's yeah. If you're gonna read anything rebirth, you, you got have to, to read, read this. the friggin'. I I should have read this before I touched the other rebirths, like the you know the Aquaman and the. Yeah, but I didn't have this yet. No, but it it does patch holes, and it patches a hole in uh, what I mentioned last time when we were talking about Batman: and The Court of Owls. Yeah, we'll have reference to, that later. We'll have to talk about that. But let's get into this. So it's being narrated by a mysterious guy at first. Turns out to be Wally West from the past. Lots of stuff from connecting Flashpoint to Watchmen and everything in mm -hmm. here. Like the first thing is a bunch of clockwork shit. Yeah. Which is so Watchmen. It's a watch. Yeah. And get then, it? Uh, yeah, so the Wally West from the old continuity shows up in the Batcave and he's like, hey, Bruce. Remember me. Please remember me. It talks a little more about the Joker stuff. One Joker's Reference. been arrested, but one's committing a crime at the same time. Yeah. Um, and the Wally West that shows up references the letter that Thomas Wayne sent Bruce during the Flashpoint Paradox. Ooh. It gets destroyed later. Oh, yeah. that's kind of for bats. I, I, I read a single issue. Batman... I want to say Batman issue 21 of Rebirth. It gets ripped up by Reverse Flash. Oh, Reverse Flash. Is the he was like, worst. "Fuck you," and then he just beat the shit out of Batman for a minute. Reverse Flash is the literal <laughs> worst, y'all. Anyways, but um, uh, no, well, he kind of gives a little narration of his life and his continuity, how he got his powers, joining the Teen Titans, blah 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 blah. And blah. how he is where he is right now. Yeah, which, which is, is like stuck in the Speed Force, trying to do his thing. He uh, approaches Johnny Thunder, which is who this is, about mm -hmm. the Justice Society, who I love, and I'm so excited they're coming back, dude. I'm we've already you. we've already seen uh, Doctor Fate, and the week we're recording this, Jay Garrick has appeared yet again. Jay Garrick, Flash, Golden Age Flash. Ooh. Yeah, in Part Four of the Button, Flash Issue Twenty Two. Exciting. Very, dude. I so, love it. So Wally is trapped in the Speed Force, um, outside of time and space. And he's desperately trying to get back, have somebody remember him, uh, because the Flashpoint Paradox is what's got him basically banished. Yeah, he's 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 just kind of stuck. And, and you'll read more of his adventures in Titans. And the Speed yeah, Force is slowly chewing away at him, um, and using it, using him and his kinetic energy to fuel future speedsters, essentially, when he dies. Um, but he can't get out of the Speed Force until somebody essentially remembers him. Until yeah, he needs a lightning rod. Yeah, until his existence is reinforced in this continuity, um, where he hasn't existed, actually. Yeah, and then there's someone uh, in Gotham, a woman who's like, oh, I've seen the future, I know Superman, and she has a Legion of Superheroes ring. Mm -hmm. I'm not a Legion of Superheroes fan, but I know this is Saturn Girl. Okay. I don't know what she, I've seen her in a couple issues of Batman, just in the asylum, but I don't know what she's been up to. And then Ryan Choi... Uh, becomes the Atom, because Ray Palmer is stuck in a microverse, which I'm pretty positive has something to do with Mr. Oz. I think Mr. Oz is holding him captive. Maybe. Because um, it, that looks like Mr. Oz's prison behind him, and... Stones and such. Mr. Oz is holding a bunch of people captain. Um, captive. No. Oh, captain, my captain. Oh, right, wait. <laughs> um, and, uh, well, and Palmer ended up shrinking down that small because he started to notice issues in the time stream. Which is caused by... Yeah, the Flashpoint Paradox. and whoever reached All in and did it. Well, I mean, I know who did it because I read part four of the button. But. Fair. So what <laughs> happened during the Flashpoint Paradox, for you guys who don't know, is that, um, of course, the Flashpoint Paradox is what set off the New Fifty Two. 
Yes. Yeah, Barry tried to save his yeah. mommy, and he done F- fucked up. Yeah, he fucked everything up. He done fucked well, the timeline. He actually didn't fuck it. What happened was he made it a little unstable. Unstable enough for something else to reach in and start messing with time. Well, I mean, he did fuck it when he saved his mom. Yeah, he did Someone fuck reached it. in to mess with time when he fixed it. Yeah. Regardless, <laughs> Barry opened the window for this thing to kind of crawl in. Just stop time traveling, Barry. It Just don't it do it. It doesn't turn out Unless well. you're chasing an evil speedster through time, there's no reason to do it. So this thing, uh, according to Wally West, stole about 10 years. Um, and that's the best way to describe it, is there's still a lot of extant characters. But they're all younger, their timelines are skewed, they don't have the relationships and the connections that we're used to them having in the DC Universe up to that point. And that is where I get onto the whole Robin and everything else thing. Yeah, well we gotta talk about Blue Beetle yes. first, because he's next. So Sorry. we have Ted Cord Blue Beetle. Mm-hmm. Lex Luthor let his dad die forever. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> so, I do remember that. So he's here. He's built himself Blue Beetle stuff. So it looks like we're going to have two Blue Beetles. Uh, I will be getting Blue Beetle Volume 1 when it's out. Okay. So we will read that. But cool. Jamie Reyes. And then Dr. Fate, my boy. I've been waiting for him to come back, man. I love Dr. Fate. He was Fate. on Earth 2, but then his helmet shattered. And then there was like a Dr. Fate series that ran for 18 issues, but it was a different continuity. So it's just kind of a thing by itself. And it was good. I love the part. idea of Nabu being trapped in this helmet and only being able to, like, act through people because of, you know, not being a total dick. Yeah, it's not exactly how it works in Young Justice. Okay. In Young Justice, it's like total possession when you put that helmet on. Right. But, in this uh, more, it's a symbiotic kind of thing? It's more like influence. Okay. Yeah. It's very, it's very cool. Eventually, uh, Kent Nelson and the helmet kind of Figured it out. Okay. <laughs> but it's what it's whatever. But I'm so glad Dr. Fate's back. So that's just another Justice Society thing in there. And he's drops this bombshell on us that the, the Blue Beetle's scared of his magic and not mechanical. alien. So yeah. that's like a really new thing. And what were you going to say? Which Robin were you talking about? So you brought up a point during the Court of Owls thing that we talked about where we have four Robins and Batman's only been Batman for ten years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, it was six years. Six years, sorry, six years. At well, that point. If you add in the ten years that whoever that was stole, 16 years is definitely enough time to have accrued four Robins. Yeah, but they haven't... That ten years never happened. Right. But what I'm saying is, so here... Yeah, but they just wanted to keep all those characters in the New 52 and then just well, didn't think about, what about I, it. What I'm thinking is that the writers maybe use this as a way to get a get out jail free card, where they wanted to keep the characters, so whatever this being was couldn't negate character and people existing, but he could steal away their time. No, so, that's not how it works. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, they fixed Damien by artificially aging him, but that was it. Okay. Rookie fan theorying that did not work. But yeah, and we just got like a bunch of panels that just show like Jessica Cruz and stuff, and then uh, Jackson who became Aqualad in Brightest Day, Black Manta's son, mm. etc., with a Black Manta's son with, like, a, a evil woman or something like that. I don't remember. It's been a little while since I read Brightest Day. But, uh, so it introduces him for just a couple panels. And then we get to this shit with Pandora here. It explodes. Remember, yeah, it was hinting at that she was the one that changed the timeline when the you started. Mm. But here it's just like, oh, she just kind of helped. And then... Did you read all the stuff in the back? All the bonus stuff? Um, I believe so, yes. So this is all... This is like a complete panel page recreation of Rorschach's death from the Watchmen. Mm-hmm. Exploded like Dr. Manhattan. Like, yeah. they weren't really trying to hide Dr. Manhattan very well. No. The week we're filming this, Dr. Manhattan confirmed. I saw his hand in the last panel of Flash issue 22. He Perfect. picked up the button. You were theorizing about that, like, two months ago. Though. Dude, I... They, like... The wall at my house, it's like a bunch of pins and shit and comic book pages. Are you the question? Yeah, I'm the question now. <laughs> I'm the question. That'd be an easy cosplay for me to do, actually. Seriously, do you should do that. It's the morph suit mask and a freaking... You know, trench coat and a hat. And yeah, yeah. Good to go. <laughs> go around going, my lady, tipping it. Yeah, you, if you shit. tip your fedora hard enough. Yeah, that's not actually how it works, guys. If you're wearing a fedora right now, take it off and burn it. But yeah, there's a reminder about Grail and Darkseid and Wonder Woman's brother, Superman's death. Mm-hmm. And he's just flying around. Um, Green Arrow and um, Black Canary. Black Canary. About how he's like, why aren't they together? They need to be, but they are now, so that's fine. Woo! Okay. Yeah! <laughs> then we get to uh, Rebirth Superman. Who still looks great with a beard. Mr. Oz contacts him. 
Now, what I'm trying to figure out is, is Mr. Oz on Dr. Manhattan's side, or is he against him? He's not an, He's not anybody's friend or enemy. He's playing the long game. Yeah, but what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> what does I, that mean in I, relation to Dr. Manhattan? What, what I figure is that he's got his own agenda, and that he's just going to manipulate everybody as best he can. Yeah, because at first I was like, I thought he was like working with Dr. Manhattan, but I've been reading along and I'm like, maybe these two aren't one in, you know, maybe they aren't on the same side. I've been thinking it's weird because he seems to be trying to get Superman to be Superman. Because at this point, you know, this Clark Kent from another world isn't Superman. Mm -hmm. It seems like he's really trying to influence him to be the best Superman he can be. And uh, in November... It's going to be an event called the Doomsday Clock, Superman versus Dr. Manhattan. Oh so I think God. this guy has this Superman in this universe, it's just a little theory I have, and is kind of motivating him Groom to be him a good maybe? hero, yeah, because he wants him to fight Dr. Manhattan. Gotcha. I think that's what's up, but I don't know. I don't know who Mr. Oz is. Could it be Ozmandius? Probably. <laughs> I don't know, but I don't know what the deal is, so... Um, I don't. I don't know what the Watchmen's motivations are because they haven't fucking been in anything except the before Watchmen miniseries. Is, is fair. I don't know. I certainly ago, don't know. Which were mostly bad, by the way. Sorry to hear that. And then Aquaman proposes to Mara. I know you're happy about that. Uh, and when he saw that love, a little love jolted in Wally West's heart of himself. He found Linda Park. Mm -hmm. She did not remember him. Which devastated him. He was ready to die after that. Yeah, and then we get a hint about Gotham and Gotham Girl, mm -hmm. which are like Superman and Supergirl, but for Gotham. Mm -hmm. Very cool, cool power set. We got a little Constantine Swamp Thing thing going on, and we'll which we'll talk about. Yeah, we'll in a cover that. Hellblazer. We'll cover that later. Hellblazer was really good. Yeah, we'll get oh, to that. Good. But he goes to Captain Boomerang, Cyborg, Dick Grayson, all these people. He just pops up out of freaking nowhere. He's like, "Please remember me," and they don't. So he just poofs back into the Speed Force. Yeah. And finally, he gives up. Yeah, and he's like watching a different Wally West. People were really outraged on this Wally West was created. But uh, they're named after the same person. They're named yeah, after... Great-grandfather, something like that. Yeah. Wallace West. So they're just named after the same person. They're not That's the cool. same person. Recently, they met face-to-face -face for the first time also. Deathstroke yeah. had the younger Wally West. Okay. All kinds of junk. I haven't read that yet. I just know what happened. But yeah, so in a last kind of like thing where he just wants to say goodbye to Barry, he's accepted he's not going to escape the Speed Force, and he visits Barry. Yeah, and Barry remembers him, which is pretty dope. Well, at the very last second, his yeah. drama requires, and he just drags his ass out of the Speed Force. Dude, when they were just staring into each other's eyes, crying and shit, I, I thought they were gonna kiss, dude. Look at that shit. <laughs> I thought they were gonna kiss almost, but yeah, nah. of course they didn't. They just hugged and shit, and then all these memories came back to Barry. And there's all this shit going on, and Wally is like, someone's fucking with time, the time fucker, and it's not you this time, Barry, so... Yeah, he's, he literally tells Barry, you're not the one who screwed everything up, somebody just piggybacked off of you. And then when time ripped open in the Batcave, something shot out, and mm -hmm. kind of embedded itself in the Batcave wall. And oh it's, shit, it's the button from Watchmen, with a little blood smear on it, comedian's button pretty fucking cool. And then a little epilogue on Mars with a watch. Yeah, Which is around. 100%. It even quotes Watchmen directly from the end of Watchmen. Uh, I did the right thing, didn't I? It all worked out in the end. With Osmandius. And then in the end, nothing ends, Adrian. Nothing ever ends. And then the watch face with another one of those little blood droplets on it. Yeah, big rebirth spread. Very, very cool. Uh, I'm very happy I picked this up so I could reread it a few times. Yeah, <laughs> Cause, absolutely. It's really... Because I'm trying to keep my first printing in a... Mint. Yeah, I'm trying to keep it in some good condition. But yeah, and then they add a bunch of stuff in here to kind of make it worth the price point. Like, they explain lots of the Watchmen stuff in the back, so that helps. Because I didn't... Like, I caught almost all of it. The only thing I didn't catch the first time I read it was uh, the panel-for-panel -panel recreation of Rorschach's death. Gotcha. That was all I didn't catch. But then it shows you all their new designs and how they change from old outfits, new characters. And I will so. say that, like, it's pretty obvious reference to The Watchmen. Even, like, I watched The Watchmen once years ago. I should get that graphic novel. We should do that. It's like That'd this fucking Oh, thing. I know. I, I actually, <laughs> it's good, though, man. I missed a class back in high school. They read that. That was one of their readings I did through the year. Oh, and you missed it? I missed it. It was the year after I graduated. 
I was really upset about that. That's right. I had to read, what's that graphic novel with the Muslim girl? Persepolis. Which that I still need to read Persepolis. Well, yeah, we were going to do that. I had to read that for class. That, that would be some literature on here, y'all. That's I can good. help into this. It'll be one of the best ones we've read, too. We might it's have insanely to, good. We're going to have to do it in a couple of parts because it's so big. Yeah, we will. We, we might, might have to have divide to, We might, we might have to two. make a little bullet list. It's two books, right? It's two books. I yeah. haven't read the second one. So we, we might have to take, take each book in two parts because there's so much. Yeah, we'll see what we have to do. Yeah, we'll see. But yeah, that's it. Thank you all very much for your support. Uh, excellent, right? Absolutely. Very good. good. <laughs> so very necessary and important. If you're going to check out Rebirth stuff, then you your money won't be wasted getting this. Yeah, Jeff Johns is kind of the architect behind the Watchmen stuff right now. He's kind of Jeff fucking Johns. He seems like the architect behind everything that we've read thus far. Also, all the DC shows on TV, he's writing for all them too, man. How, when does this man sleep? He, I think that every day, dude. I don't Jeff, know. If, he, if Jeff Johns ever watches this, and you have an answer to that question, please hit us up and let us know how you get how you do all this and sleep. Well, everyone who works in the comic industry, their hobby is comics, anyways. It has to be because you have you to know you, you everything think get, about everything. You don't think he'd get sick of that? I'm not sick of it. <laughs> Go into comic business. I read a graphic novel every day, dude. I read, f what, four and a half in, like, the last two hours. Yeah, you did that. Most of them are reread, though, right? Oh, yeah. But yeah, next time we're going to have our first manga review, one I know lots of my viewers, because this used to be a Godzilla channel. That's it. So we're going to do Ultraman Volume 1, our first manga review. I'm very excited. You're impressed. You don't even know Jack about Ultraman. I, I don't know Jack about but I am. I a swear you've seen Episode 1 of Ultraman. We're going to have to make sure. But yeah, that's it. Thank you all once again, and we'll see you all later.